So all of heaven is watching the earth all the time, looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. Hello, everyone. God bless you, and welcome today to Terry Mize Ministries podcast. We are delighted to be with you, honored to minister some of these good things from the Word of God. And just always remember, tell your friends and family, you can find us over on uh, YouTube at Terry Mize Ministries, and then also anywhere you can get a a podcast, uh, the audio is there available also to you. Then our website is terrymize.com. We are have been talking, uh, Terry's been sharing actually um, a great deal on supernatural missions. And we've covered the first well, we three, have seven points. And we've seven points. Three. I'm going to try to get through the other four. We're going to try to get through the other four today. So we want you to listen in because this is really the crux of the whole reason. There's a Bible and there's a church and there's preachers and believers all over the world. And if you don't have that plan, that purpose, uh, the focus of what the Word of God is all about, then you miss the ship. Oh, absolutely. You know, and so we want to talk to you about those wonderful things and make it just as real and practical and visual for you to be able to see it. Like we say so many times, oh, now I see it. Well, that's what we want to happen for you. And so, darling, go ahead. Well, amen. Well, we've been dealing with the, uh, the supernatural missions. We've been dealing with seven Bible principles for world missions, seven biblical reasons, Bible reasons why right. I should believe in missions, why you should believe in missions, why the pastor should believe in missions, why the church should believe in missions, why we should pray for missions, why we should give to missions, why we should go to missions. These are they're Bible reasons, Renee. Right. They're not right. just something somebody thought up. Uh, th- <laughs> no, these not are philosophical from the Word reasons. of God. These are not these yeah. are not human uh, human. Human project, but a divine project. That's it's right. From the heart of God. So we covered the first three. We covered that God instituted it. That you ought to believe in missions because God, God instituted it, it. Jesus. Uh, it's a central theme of the Bible. It's all through the Bible, Old the Testament, and New. And then the thirdly, Jesus commands it. It was a command from That's Jesus. Right. So we need to be doing it. So uh, let's get on into number four today. Number four is a, is a powerful point that the Lord gave me all those many years ago. <laughs> is is because love. Compels, compels it. it. Isn't that wonderful? Love compels it. If you're a lover, yes, you'll get involved in missions. That's right. If you're a Christian, you're a lover. That's if you're right. a lover, you'll get involved in missions. You know, you can you can give to somebody without loving them, but you can't love somebody no, without giving right. to them. That's right. Absolute truth. Now, all you wives ought to be punching your punching your husbands on that point. You can <laughs> uh, if they love you, they'll give to you. Love right. compels us to give. Right. I mean, love compels. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? Well, it is. If you're a lover, right you're a giver. Foundation. Love compels you. Right. To get, you know, I've said for so many years that that uh, one of the supernatural things that attract the world to Christians is not just the great sermons, not even the great signs and wonders, although those are powerful, 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 and I'm unwilling to do without them. No, right. But one thing that attracts, uh, that makes Christians different from everybody else, is we give our money away. No, who else does <laughs> That's that? Right. We, we're That's givers. Right. We give, and uh, other people don't give. Other organizations don't give. Other, you know, Hollywood, not like the church Hollywood does. brags. On themselves and pat themselves on the back because they right. they raise a few hundred thousand dollars for AIDS or some cause like that, which is out of a room full of fifty millionaires, of millionaire, <laughs> multi-millionaires. Uh, right, right. Ought to be ashamed of yourself. Uh, but but we Christians give. Yes, we are givers. Love compels That's right. you. That's uh, right. To give. First John three, and verse seventeen and eighteen. First John three says, uh, uh, um, "Whoso has this world's goods." 
If you have this world's goods, whoso has wow. this world's goods, and seeth his brother in need, right. and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, question, how dwelleth the love of God in you? Well, what isn't a profound a powerful, scripture. Isn't that a powerful thing? Yes. If you have this world's goods, and yet you see somebody in need, and you just shut up your bowels of compassion mm. from them, how dwelleth the love of God in you? In the next verse, verse 18 goes on to say, My little children, let us not love just in word and tongue, right? but in Indeed. deed and truth. Truth. You know, we can't right. just pat somebody on the back and say, Well, God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> well, be warmed and filled. I know you're hungry and cold. Be warmed and filled. God bless you. No, we got to do something about it. Love compels you to be a That's giver. That's right. That's right. Always. I mean, it's just wonderful. You know, the whole thing about that is that is that if Romans 5, 5 says that the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost, if that is the love of God, yes. then it is a love for the world. No, absolutely. It's not just uh, mama raised a nice child, sure. <laughs> a, a kind, respectful, polite little child. Sure. No, it is a supernatural love love from the very throne room of heaven that as God looks down on the earth he loves the world and that's the same kind of God given sure. love that he put in every believer's heart and goes back to the central text of the Bible God so loved the world yes and love compelled him to do something he so right. loved the world that he kind gave. of love if you that love you give love. God loved oh he gave yes God so yes, loved the world, yes he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, oh my. but have everlasting life. That's right. That's right. It's that it's that ability for the supernatural power of God to come in a believer's heart to look out at other people and love them in Absolutely. a measure like the Father loves them. Well, Matthew 25, Jesus gives an example. And he says, you know, in the last days when Jesus comes again, he says he's going to separate the sheep and the goats. Right. And he said, I'm going to say to you, uh, Hey, I was sick and you didn't visit me. Right. Uh, right. I was cold and you didn't warm me. I no, was exactly. I, you, I was naked and you didn't clothe me. I was hungry and you didn't feed me. Right. Uh, I was thirsty and you didn't give me a drink. And you'll say, Lord, right. when did we see you in those conditions and didn't help you out? Right. And you'll say, because if you didn't do it to the least of the people. That's right. If you didn't do it to the least one, you didn't do it for me. Well, and it's it's the it's, way it, we look. It seems to me, Renee, that Jesus is saying in Matthew 25, and you can have your own opinion about this, but it seems to me <laughs> that Jesus is saying in Matthew 25 that your debt to heaven right. is payable on earth. Payable on earth. That your debt to God mm. is payable to man. My goodness. He said, if you didn't do it to the least one, you didn't do it to me. That's wow. astounding. So love compels it. Yes, it does. Number five, fairness requires it. Mm. Fairness requires you to be involved in world missions. Yes. It's just not fair. It's not <laughs> fair that That's America, right. which is only one-fifth of the world's population, right. one-twentieth of the world's population, My 5%, goodness. hear the gospel and hear the gospel and hear the gospel and hear the gospel, gospel on radio, gospel on television, mm. gospel. Uh, you drive the down the road, there's a bumper sticker that says, honk if yes. you love Jesus. You you see a billboard that says, Jesus is Lord. Right. I mean, the gospel is available here. Yes, it is. To everybody. Everybody's not a Christian here. No. But it's available here. You could it's, be a Christian if you wanted to that's be. That's right. You know, and even, even so shows, even movies, available. even television shows, Intense. cop shows, uh, it seems like every time the cops blow into some law and order show or some, some TV cop mm -hmm. show, it mm -hmm. seems like they're right in front of a mission where you can hear somebody in there preaching the that's Roman right. road. Somebody's <laughs> in there right. preaching the gospel. Somebody's in there giving the you an opportunity to get saved. That's right. All it's, just, it's just in America, short. it's the available, and it's not fair right. that we hear the gospel over and over and over, that we are seated and seated and reseated with wow, the gospel. That's right. While 19 20ths of the world goes without. No, no, no. We can't it's leave anybody out. It's yeah. just not fair. Well, now, you know, yeah, America is right. not, not uh, unevangelized. No. It's just unconverted. That's right. It's been evangelized. <laughs> uh, England is not unevangelized. That is It's just unconverted. Truth. That's Australia right. is not unevangelized. Right. It's just it's unconverted. unconverted. And we, we need to make sure that we evangelize where people have not been evangelized. We need to mm. take the name of Jesus 
where they've not heard it. Uh, we, we need to shine the light where the light's dim and name the name of Jesus where it's not been named. That's right. We, we need to go to the uttermost and the guttermost. Paul uttermost. said we need to preach to the regions beyond. The regions beyond. I love all that New Testament language. Well, absolutely. You know, when, when Jesus, when you were talking about that the other day, that Jesus said, I can't stay here. I have to go to the next oh, yeah. town. Yeah. When we were in Bible college, yeah, the church the, the we went Luke, to. They said, come preach for us over here. He said, I, I, I can't. I go to the next towns also. For yeah. there unto am I sent. Right. He knew he was sent. He was a soldier under command. Well, and I just think that's so amazing that um, when I was in Bible college, that's when I first really got in touch with that verse about go to the next town, yeah. the next city. Yeah. We had a the church that we all the students went to was a grand missions church here in the state of Texas. Sure. And it was so spectacular that they named their convention. The theme of their convention, Terry, was next towns. Next towns. That's great. And I just think that's really yeah, that's, that's a revelation and an understanding that you have to get that we just can't focus on teaching the same people all the time and not go to the world. No. We can do both. We can no. hold two well, thoughts in our great head the same missionary, Oh, great missionary pastor, Oswald J. Smith. Oh, what a grand man. Of course, man. he's been in heaven for decades, but yeah. Oswald J. Smith pastored right. the People's Church in Toronto, Canada. What a great man. And, and I could talk for hours about Oswald J. Smith. Yes. We don't have time, but, but oh my goodness. Uh, you ought to you ought to look on Google or or Amazon or somewhere and see if you can get some of his old books. I've got all these old old books. And what's, the, what's apart. the name of the one that has that missionary story? And you know, oh, well, the one you're thinking of is Passion for Souls. Passion for Souls. The one of them is called The Man God Uses. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, he's just got so many wonders. But anyway, he he was a missionary pastor. Yes, he was. He tried to be a missionary and he couldn't because he'd get sick and and. Couldn't do it. And God told him, so I didn't call you to be a missionary. I called, right. you to, I called you to do missions from here. And so he had this great missionary church, had great missionary conferences, great missionary conventions. Gave He gave every year seven times more money to foreign missions than he allowed to be spent at the church at home. Isn't that he amazing? He told his church and told the board, That's he said, the way every he year it. we'll give seven times more seven times foreign, more. Uh, foreign missions than we spend here at home. And he said, if the year ever comes that that doesn't happen, you'll get my resignation. Well, but anyway, I started to say to you, he said this. He said, no man has the right to hear the gospel twice. That's right. Until every man has heard it once. Wow, isn't that powerful? How many times have you heard it? No, that's right. My How many times goodness. have I heard it? How many times have we heard it? No man has the right <laughs> to hear the gospel twice. Twice. Until every man's heard it once. Oh, my gosh. I just think that's one of the most, one of the greatest well, it is. missionary America's statesmen. been marinated in the gospel. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and the rest of the world, many parts of the world, have have barely had anything. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you know, the church today is all packed up, on got their suitcases packed. Yeah. And, and they got them sitting in the church floor, and they're sitting on top of the suitcase, mm -hmm. and they're all got their hands up, and they're all singing, uh, I'll fly away. And I just want to yell at them, unpack, <laughs> unpack. We need to sing, I'll work till Jesus to do. comes. We've got work to do. You mean that do. old song, I'll work till Jesus till comes? Till Jesus comes. Uh, instead of singing, I'll fly away, <laughs> we're not ready to go yet. If you're getting no. up a busload to go to heaven mm. today, you just leave me out because I'm not going. No, it's I am too going much one work. of these days, contrary to popular too opinion. Too much work. And it'd be worth your trip there just to see me come through the gate because I'm going to teach King David a dance step or two he didn't know anything about because he didn't know about being redeemed. I'm redeemed. Well, amen. Well, and your relatives need, you know, they may need some more time to decide they're going to give their heart to the Lord. So we've got work to do. But you know, the church is Thank all God. excited over the second coming of Jesus, Renee, when half the church doesn't know he came the first time. No. I mean, half right. the world, not half the church, half the world. Half the world. Half the world's population doesn't know he came the first time, and we're all excited over him mm. coming the second time. So fairness requires it. It's just not. Fair. It's available. And I'm not saying don't preach in the USA. That's fine. That's that's fine. Right. Just don't call that missions. Uh, here in the United States, it'd be outreach. It'd be evangelism. That's what a church does. Uh, if you're going to go paint some houses and help some poor people, that's wonderful. That's what a church does. That's outreach. It should be done. But it's not missions. Missions is getting the gospel no, to right. the world. And uh, it, the gospel is available here. You know, I've had so many Bible, stu Bible school students and graduates tell me over the decades that I've, I've preached in Bible schools all over the world. <laughs> and they've told me, Brother Terry, uh, when I graduate, uh, uh, could you help me get places to preach? Uh, it, it's, it's crowded here in America. It's tough. I don't know where I'd preach at. And I don't know if I'm an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. I don't know if I'm Kenneth Hagin or Kenneth Copeland. Or I don't know who I am. Or am I old Roberts? I mean, who am I? And I always say, look, you, you go do what squirts out of you. 
Yeah. And I'll watch, and then I'll tell you what you are. No, that's you know, right. Don't, don't, don't try to be something. Let, let the something you are come out. and Because wherever you are, the what's in you will come out. And uh, uh, and I tell them, and by the way, it's not crowded where I go. No, it's not. It may be My crowded goodness. here in the States. It may be tough to find a place to preach here, but it's not crowded where I go. You go with me to Mexico or Africa or India or, mm-hmm. or, 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 or Nepal or, or, or Pakistan or, or, or Thailand or Cambodia or Vietnam. You, right. you go with me around the world. It's not crowded. No, that's There's right. There's lots of places to preach. So fairness requires it. It's not fair. You need to be involved in missions because it's just not fair. How would you feel if you were the Lord of the Harvest? sitting on your throne in heaven, and you're looking over the world, you're looking over the harvest field my, the world, my, my. the globe, seven and a half billion people. You're looking at seven and a half billion people, and yet you see one tiny bit seated and seated and seated and seated Jesus, with the gospel, Jesus, while all the rest goodness. of it goes unseated and are destined for hell. Mm. It's not fair. No, we've we got to go to the world. We must be involved got to in go to the world. missions. Number six. We owe it. It's yes. a debt that we owe. The church needs to understand that, that That's we right. are in debt. Now, a lot of us preachers, and I believe it to my, I mean, all the way to my toes, we preach you ought to be out of debt. Get out of debt. Don't don't, right. don't get in debt. But we'll never get out of debt when it comes to soul winning. No, that's right. We that's need right. to understand that the, the Apostle Paul, as great as he was, right. and as much as he had preached, he made the statement in Romans chapter 1. He said, I'm in debt. I'm in debt. I'm a debtor. debtor. I owe the gospel, he said. I owe the gospel My to mind. those that are at Rome also. That's right. And as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to them. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, no. for it's the power, power of, of God. God unto salvation. Hallelujah. And I said the other day on one of the podcasts earlier, I said, you know, the church has never understood those points that Paul made. Paul no, said, right. I'm in debt. He said, I'm not ashamed. And he said, I am ready. Well, the church has never understood she's in debt. She's never been ready. <laughs> and she's always been ashamed. But we, we need to get to the point where we understand that we owe the gospel That's right. to the world. You need to believe in missions. You That's need to get right. involved in missions. You need to give to missions, pray for missions, be involved in missions, simply because it's not fair. That's right. And it's a debt that we owe. And love compels it. That's right. And Jesus commands it. And it's a central theme of the Bible. And God instituted it. That's just amazing, you know. And 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 we don't want to be hypocritical about this, hearing it. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've got to actually be doers of it, not just say amen or, oh, I know we're supposed to help people. And a lot of people acknowledge, well, that's what we do. But then you have got to go actually do and, it and, there's and a be difference. a part of it. And there's a difference between heathen Right. One that's never heard. Right. And Christ rejectors, one that's heard and doesn't want it. No, that's right. You know, America's full of Christ rejectors. Christ America has, rejectors. There's the gospel, and some right. preacher comes on TV, there's the gospel, and somebody flips the channel, mm-hmm. pushes the button on the remote, don't want it. They, they reject the gospel. Right. They could have had the gospel. Any t- at any time. rejected it. But see, in other countries, it's not available. No, that's right. It's not available. It's just not available. I was in an African nation uh, a few years ago, and uh, I, I was just amazed at, at at the overall lack, even among people that were in the ministry, yeah. of uh, teaching tools, their insight into even Absolutely. evangelizing other places of the world, and and you can't imagine how backward even Christianity can be in other parts of the world. That's why we've got to continue to teach and preach no, and reach out absolutely. and win souls. Let me finish this point on 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 we owe it uh jeremiah 20 jeremiah 20 is a song that the heathen have sung for millennia and i can't sing it the way they sing it because i don't feel the way they feel (laughs) because i'm redeemed but jeremiah 20 says the harvest is past right the summer's over well and we're not saved well, didn't that give you chills up your back? The summer's passed. The harvest is ended, is ended. And, and we're we not, are saved. not saved. It's the way the people must have felt in the day of Noah when God shut the door. Right. The Bible says there in Genesis 8 that God shut, shut the door, the door the and no man could open it. Right. And all those people that Noah had begged to come in the ark, preached to them, please come mm. in the ark. The rain's coming. You're going to die. They my, wouldn't my, do it. My. They just laughed. But whenever it started raining yes, and God shut the door. 
You know, Noah, Noah would tell you that faith will make you look really stupid. <laughs> that's right. Until it starts to rain. Yeah, until it starts to rain. And when they I started think clawing on that door, exactly when they clawing right. on that door until, until their fingers were bloody. Please mm-hmm. let me in. Let me in. Kids, it's your mama. Uh, it, it's your brother-in-law. It's your best friend. Let me in. Please let me in. And God shut the door and no man could open it. And so that was the same song they sang. The summer's passed. Mm. The harvest has ended. And we are mm. not saved. Well, wow. isn't that horrible? That's just a scary, scary thought. Last really scripture is. on that point, and I need to move along. Ezekiel three seventeen. You and I've talked about this many times. God said, "Son of man." Yes. Or I'll change it to our vernacular today. Christian worker, uh, when you see the, the the Bible says wicked, I'll say the heathen. When you see the heathen mm-hmm. in his heathenish way, and you don't go and warn him. Uh, to turn from his heathenish way, that man will die in his sins, but his blood will I require at your wow. hands. That's, that's some a heavy scary, stuff. That's some yeah. heavy duty scripture, isn't it? No, it is. But he goes it on is. to say, but if you see the heathen or the wicked in their heathenish way, and you do tell them, yes, <laughs> and you warn them, and you preach to them, and you witness yes. to them, but they ignore you, they reject you. Mm. He said, well, they'll die and go to hell. But he said, at least you've delivered your soul. Right. I've done my job. I wish we could take about 10 minutes to talk about that. Isn't that tremendous? Yeah, do your job. It's scary. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you don't warn them, then they're going to go to hell, but their blood's going to be on your hands. Oh, my. If you do warn them and they reject you, they're still going to hell. But at least God said you've delivered your soul. Last point, number seven. Jesus' return hinges on world missions. That's right. The return of Jesus <laughs> hinges on world missions. We're not waiting on God. He's waiting. No, that's right. On that's what you have to keep in us. mind. He's waiting on us. Matthew twenty four fourteen. Jesus, the greatest prophet I ever knew anything about, said, "This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all nations. Yes, and then shall, shall the, the end, end come." come. Revelation 7, 9, and 10, the, the apostle John uh, looked on the Isle of Patmos, and he said, I, I looked, and I saw into heaven, and I beheld a great multitude no man could number, and they were of every nation, kindred, <laughs> tongue, and tribe. <laughs> well, I, I believe, Renee, that oh, John, I believe John really saw that. Oh, I do, too. But I do too. for him to have really seen it, what a sight. we're going we to have to get the gospel <laughs> to every kindred, nation, race, right. tongue, right. creed, tribe, color the whole world we've That's got right. to get the gospel to the world to the nations it's a to the kindred happy employment to the status <laughs> you, you know Renee, it's, it's, <laughs> we're about out of time but but mission it's not just old clothes barrels it's not oh, just no. it's not just used <laughs> tea bags it's not just the church giving a tip to a missionary no, or giving right. them just barely enough to scrape along right. it, it, right. it's, it's no, doing no. our job as a Christian the world that cost God his son move that cost up. Jesus his blood that's right and we don't want it to cost you your blood we don't want you to die over it but but it is going to cost you some going or right. some giving, well, or such some a praying, noble act. some tears. It's you know, I don't intend to die over it. I've been doing thing. it 52 years, and they right. tried to kill me a bunch, but I, I'm not intending to die doing this, but I am right. intending to give it everything I've got. I, no, I, I that's only right. have one life to give from my Lord. How could I give any less than my best? And I'm just going to keep giving and giving until Jesus comes. Well, and that's what but we should do. Supernatural <laughs> missions. Seven Reasonable Bible service. Seven principles for world missions. I've that's given right. You, I've given you seven reasons that are Bible reasons, not showing you pictures of hungry kids, not trying to make you feel guilty, not showing you people dying. And, and poverty that's all there that's all real but that's not right. the motive for us given the motive for us christians given us word people given right. us bible people given is because the bible tells it and so i've given us seven bible principles number one god instituted it was his idea number two it's the central theme of the bible it's all through the word of god number three jesus commands it remember jesus jesus commands it number four love compels it number five uh, fairness requires it number six it's a debt that we owe we owe the gospel and number seven the return of jesus hinges on it the Bible tells us in the book of James, it says the 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 the, the, the husbandman, that's God, right. the husbandman is waiting for the precious fruit, fruit. of the earth. I think that's one of the He's best waiting. verses in He's the whole waiting. Bible about evangelism. He's waiting yes. for the precious fruit of the earth. And that's how he sees people. He's calling people the precious fruit of the earth. And those seven Bible principles, supernatural, revelation, insight to the real mind of God, on how he feels about 
taking this gospel to the world. And so I want to encourage all of you, pastors, leaders, church members, uh, workers, whoever you may be, even a a brand new convert, um, learn these scriptures, go look them up, um, ask some, ask questions, get online, look up missionaries, (laughs) you know, look up great men like Oswald J. Smith, Hudson Taylor, some of these marvelous men, John G. Lake. In older days, the the modern church doesn't know much about missions. So you know, if you Google, Google that, they wouldn't tell you much. But, you know, if you'll go begin to look it up, search the scriptures to find out what God wants you to do, you'll begin to gain, as you read the word of God, a, a compassion for the lost. Uh, people that are walking through airports, you just, I just practice loving people all the time as I just see them walk down the road or walk in a business or in an airport. I just practice looking at them, not th- thinking critical thoughts about them. They may be, they may look like creatures. They may look like they haven't had a bath in a while, but you have to practice how God sees people like that, that he wants us to just go do our job. That as we look out on the harvest, we realize that it's ripe, it's ready. The precious fruit of the earth, the things that, that how God sees the earth, that they're lost and they're going to go to a devil's hell if you and I don't do our job. So I want to encourage you pastors, find some good Holy Ghost, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. And then underneath it put in big letters, go do your job. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I told you when we first started this that Fred Price, my dear friend, Craig uh-huh. Crenshaw Christian Center out in uh, Los Angeles, the great faith dome. You know, he told me, he said, Terry, that message you preach absolutely changed my life. And then he had me come preach to a whole room full, a whole church full of pastors. Yes. And it changed some of those guys. I One guy jumped up and gave me a hundred thousand dollars after I finished preaching. I mean, so moved and so touched to understand this is why we're here. We have work to do and it costs a lot of money and it costs time and it costs energy and it costs time and prayer and focus and order and organization. So we invite you to be a part of that in Jesus name. And let's go to the world. You can find us at terrymize.com. We're so glad you've joined us today. And we always want to remind you that as you serve the Lord, (laughs) you are more More than than conquerors. conquerors. God bless you. Bye-bye. Have you ever looked down the barrel of a gun? Have you ever looked into a killer's eyes on the other side of that gun that says, I'm going to kill you? I've done it not only once, I've been shot at a number of times in a number of places around the world, and every time God has miraculously saved my life. And uh, in my old book, my original book, 40 years old now, uh, called More Than Conquerors, there's a story in there called Hitchhiker, the very first chapter, that you ought to read, you ought to get in the hands of your teenagers, anybody else that's going out in the world and, and there's a possibility of uh, being in harm's way. And uh, God saved my life, He saved lots of people's lives because of it. And uh, we want to give it to you. Click on the link below. We'll send it to you for free. And it'll be a blessing to you more than conquerors. But Psalms 138 verse 2 uh, says this. uh, I will worship toward thy holy temple. Praise your name for your loving kindness and for your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. When I was a teenager, God gave me that scripture. And he said, I have magnified my word. I put my word even higher than my name. For me to, for me to break my word, for me to lie, I'd have to become a liar and break my, knee, my name. I'd have to bow my knee to Satan because he's the father of lies. I will not break my word. And that gave this teenager an unshakable confidence in the power of God that God will never lie, never break his word, that if I can find it in this book, I can make it happen. I can take it to the bank. And that's what happened when I've been shot at and threatened and all those kind of things. I've gone back to the fact that, no, God's put his word even higher than his name. I can trust his word. And when I've done that, God's blessed me, helped me, saved me, and he'll do the same for you. I've been shot at a number of times in a number of places around the world. And every time, God has miraculously saved my life. 
This is, this is God's Word. So John, it's, it's not just John talking. It's not just the Holy Ghost yes. talking. God is talking. I started talking out loud to myself. Sure. And I would say, no, you're not going to think like that. Sure. No, you're not going to be worried about that. That's a worry thought. And I'm not going to think that worry thought. That's a fear thought. And, you know, anytime I've done that, I've won. Anytime I didn't do it, I lost. <laughs> because what's happening is it's, it's exalting itself. Itself. It's trying to control. The conquerors, uh, they've just done in German. Sending lots of money to orphans. We yes, just sent another uh, $8,000 out. I read Terry's stories about he ended up being in Mexico being shot at by robbers. Eating up the stories that he would tell of his missions and ministry, and it would build my faith. 